What's up, all Power Asker? Today's video, we're doing a clutch and a 2006 model TJ. But the reason we're actually pulling everything out is right there. That is what's left of his throwout bearing. So, the reason we're pulling it, throwout bearing. But while we're in there, we're putting the clutch, pressure plate, the throwout bearing, and slave cylinder. So, if you want to see how it's done, follow along. Let's go. Well, I got the console out before I even thought about pulling up the camera. Going around the console, you're going to have 10 millimeter uh, screws right here. I'm using my little baggie here to keep track of all that. I wrote console on there so I keep track of all the screws. As you can see right there, 10 millimeter. Okay, you got three right there. Then right along in here in the console itself, you got one underneath the shift boot. You got to pull up the trim ring, which is here that's going around the six speed shifter. So you pull that right there up. You're going to see a bolt underneath that. You have to get that. These right here. And where the cup holders are, you see right here, this hole, there's another 10 millimeter there. Once you get that, you take the console, pick it up over top of the shifter. You may have to pull the shifter back into like second gear and pull your four-wheel drive selector up so you can bring the console back this way. So now that we've got all that out of the way, oh, also over here, you've got some, uh, what size were those? What did I use? 5 sixteenths. I used the 5 sixteenths on the shift selector for the uh, four-wheel drive. Right there, right there, and I loosened this one up. So it allowed me to pick this up enough that this came out from underneath that. It's cool. Cool. So now what we got. What I'm after is taking the top of the shifter off. And I'm going to take, and uh, once I get the top of the shifter off, I'm going to stuff a rag down in and tape it. So I don't drop any kind of crud down the side of it. So it looks like now, <laughs> imagine that, Torx. So I got one, two, <clears throat> three, and over here on this side, four torch bits. And let me go figure out what size it is. I'll be right back. And the torch you will be using is a T27. Four screws, get them out. So check out how the shifter works. You got this little flat slot right here, this flat tab that comes down inside here. It pushes the shift rails back and forth. It aligns them for the different shift rails, pushing back and forth, going through your different gears. That's pretty cool. Never seen that before. And once you get the shifter off, look right here. See this crap around the edge? Don't knock it down side there. Just get you a paper towel or something and hook onto it to the edge of it and bring it over this way. Therefore, you don't knock it down side your transfer transmission. So you just kind of hit on the edge right here, come over like that. Okay, let's get you guys caught up. I'm working on the shifter linkage for the transfer case right now. I've already pulled the wiring harness, as you can see, right there. And to pull the linkage, and when we go to put it back up, the easiest way I've seen, so I'm figuring out to do it. You see where the light's hitting down next to the yoke, right down. Oh, my finger, right there. That's where the transfer case shifting linkage hooks onto right there, which we have it hanging right there because I took that arm right off now I'm working on taking off this bracket right here because the shifter linkage for the transfer case pivots right there so I've got that one off it's a 15 millimeter it's part of the uh, transfer case bolts the other one's way down here and I just about got it off so taking that off is gonna allow us to move that linkage back out of the way enough that we can drop the transmission and have some of that stuff out of the way Okay, you got the drive shaft dropped, eight millimeter. You got the little straps that Chrysler normally uses. It goes out and around your slip shaft. TJs are different from a YJ. YJs, you got the, the slip yoke that goes up inside the transfer case. TJs actually have a spine shaft comes in out right there. So cut that wire tie. And we'll pull it out, there we go. And you gotta get that boot off right there, which we'll do that in a moment. But I'll show you guys something on the speed sensor. The speed sensors are on the output here of your transfer case. Look right there. See that little orange tab? It goes all the way through here. Let me press it in just a little bit. You can see the edge of it right there. So you take and you push that tab through. It has to stick out by a sixteenth of an inch or so. Then you're able to push this and it'll slide off the speed sensor. And once you get your eight millimeters out here, so we'll get this yoke. 
get this boot off this thing because I want to stick to it. Got your slip shaft coming. We got underneath this drive shaft, so I'm caught myself in the head with it. Let's gently pull. There she goes. So you can see how the difference is. TJ's got that short snub shaft right there with this blind shaft coming out the back of the transfer case. There's still an MP231J. It's just that TJ's have a different spline coming out the back end of it. Much better design, honestly. All right, back up top. Okay, I told, showed you guys a moment ago by taking the linkage out for the uh, shifter for the transfer case. You can see right there, my light ranged. It's starting to get a little dark out here. You got, I got my wire ties right here holding that bracket, by the way. I got wire ties right there holding that bracket, by the way, so when we drop and raise the transmission back up, it stays out of the way. And also right there, you see the shift arm for the transfer case. A wire tied it up to where it ties into the body right there. Again, that prevents us from when we raise the transmission up hanging it, getting in our way and stuff. Uh, got the rack stuffed in there to protect the inside the transmission. That goes down to right down inside there. No, wait, this one here goes right there. That's where that one goes. Uh, heads up, people. It's got a tab top and bottom. Squeeze like this. It'll put unplug right there. And that one goes right down here is your forward drive shift indicator. Right. Bring it back back around this way. Uh, there. See the top of that sensor right here? That's your shift indicator telling you what your your four-wheel drive and stuff like that. Just pull that tab back right there, and unplug from that. Then you got these little Christmas trees here. You grab hold of them, and they're in like the little holes. Where's one at? Right there. Like a little hole right there. That's where this one was stuck at. Pull out. Ah, look at my camera, you can see it, huh? Pull outward like it's right here, but wiggle it back and forth. You'll walk those little Christmas trees right out of those holes. No problem. All right, so skid plate's pretty well loose. So, I don't know, hit, check back in a bit. Okay, next step. 18 millimeter take your transfer case bolts out and your motor mount or transmission mount right there 13 millimeter or half inch now before you start dropping your skid plate be sure to have you a jack or something underneath the back in the transmission here to support the weight because once you remove all this the transfer case transmission everything all the weight's going to start dropping back so i have right there on the back there's the transmission supporting it there so i get ready to move the transmission back i'm gonna put my transmission jack under the uh, tr uh, transmission transfer case allow that to support the weight while i work on the bell housing bolts and as right now i've got one bolt on this side one bolt on the other side holding the skid plate up and you see as we're creating the gap here as we're loosening this one up i got this foam block underneath that to support to support as it drops down but what I have to do is take it and loosen this one up, come over and get this one just about ready to come out, and then go over and get that and over that side, get it just about ready to come out, then allow it to come down on that block, and we'll be good to go. Or you can put a uh, big jack underneath it and lower it down that way. Or if you've got two people, you can do it that way. Or, I don't know. There's lots of ways of doing it. Now that we've got the skid plate out of the way, your mount here, I'm bolted for the bottom of the uh, transmission. But that also has your exhaust hanger hanging up there. So what you have to do is loose, take these uh, 15 millimeter, take a 15 millimeter, take those bolts out. This mount will swing down and you'll be able to unhook it from the exhaust up here. Right there. It'll slide back toward the rear of the Jeep. So, yep, take them out. Got the slide cylinder disconnected here. We're actually taking out the bell housing. Reason you want to do that is instead of disconnecting it from the line and leaving it in there, you're gonna have all that brake fluid coming out of here. You don't want to take a bath in brake fluid, so just disconnect it, let it hang right here. We're gonna put a new one in, but we're gonna do that whenever we get the transmission back in place and all that kind of stuff. So just drop your slate cylinder down, let it ride, let it hang. And it's connected by one of the bell housing bolts right here. So got my oh it backed up a little bit. 
Got my transmission adapter here, rigged up on this transmission where I can pull out transfer case, transmission and all. Got the harness hanging here. I'm just making sure because I'm running my strap over this right here to cinch it down to my transmission adapter for my floor jack. Make sure I don't have it hooked on any hoses or uh, wiring harness and stuff. So, back to the other side to hook it up. So what, so what do we have left? We got crankshaft position sensor, starter, bolt there, and, and one right there. Uh, some of the bell housing bolts are already out. There's one out. Dad actually started working on this thing before he brought it down here. He asked me if I would help him with this. and I told him to bring it down here because I got a concrete driveway. We just, I'll take care of it from here. So He'd already started disassembling some of it. So we just towed this thing down here and I took it over from there. So help my daddy out. Okay, let's crawl back over here. Bell housing bolt there, and of course you got some up top. So that's what we have left. So we get the bell housing bolts out, starter, and crankshaft position sensor. Before I come up from underneath here, let me point something out that's actually a benefit of the TJs over the YJs when it comes to pulling the transmission. Um, this generation TJ, of course, has the duals coming off right here, coming into a single Y pipe that comes in front of the oil pan here because the TJ's had the crossover comes over in front of the oil pan the exhaust isn't in the way is not in the way of pulling the transmission versus the YJ's brings their pipe like right along through here which has limited ground clearance all kinds of stuff like that which sometimes isn't completely in the way but it can be enough just to be a, a pain in the tail so probably uh, on a rust bucket if I don't end up doing a VA conversion before I get together I'm going to redo the exhaust, put the TJ exhaust on to bring the exhaust over in front of everything to help clear everything. Besides, it gives you more ground clearance too because of the oil pan. You can get you a, a, a skid to mount for frame, come across. That protects all this stuff right here if you need to. Or make one. Whatever feel froggy. Get this loose there. Got that good and tight. Now the crankshaft position sensor, look right here. See that little orange tab? Let's see if I can zoom in a little bit on it for you. See that little orange tab? It extends all the way to the top side of the plug right here. Take your finger on the top side here, push downward. See how that right there pulls, pops out? Then pull this to the point that it stops. Then you push this. If I can do this with one hand. Okay, so I can't. Anyway, you pull this right here, because otherwise, this when you push this right here, it's not gonna, you will not allow you to push that as long as this right here is locked in place. So I'm going to get my other hand up inside there, but you see what's going on. Once you pull that orange tab back out of the way, then you can push that in and pull that sensor plug back. Now that we got it pulled out, you get a closer look. The thing pushes across right here. You push it in, it locks that tab in place where you can't push this right here down so when it's extended over you see it sticks inside there you'll take one finger you'll push there you'll push this out just enough because it's got this little lip right here you hang that lip with your finger or some type of little hook or edge or screwdriver whatever you got to do to do it just don't damage it where you can't pull it at all then you pull it out far enough get back here then you pull it out far enough it allows you to squeeze this down and pull the plug to unplug it so I had to take one hand, come from around this way, and the other hand was coming up from this way, using both hands to uh, unplug it. But there we go. Now before you drop that starter, disconnect that negative battery cable. We don't need no sparks. We've got two 15 millimeter bolts, one on the bottom as you can see here, and one up on the top. Take them out. Someone's going to say, hey, you take the front dry shaft out. You haven't shown that. Well, you're right, I haven't. Simply because he already had it out when we dragged it down here. So, yep, there's that. I forgot to point out to you guys that your starter bolt, the top one, is actually on this side of the bell housing. And just to prevent any damage, this uh, sensor here, I'm probably going to go ahead and take it out because if we have to actually drop the transmission downward any, it's going to come down right into the exhaust, and I don't want to take a risk on breaking it, so I'll probably go ahead and take that out too. It appears to be either a 9 or 10 millimeter taking that out. But once you get your starter out, that bottom ear 
the bottom mounting gear of that starter. See how it hangs down right there? You take it, tuck it right over top of the exhaust like that. And she'll sit just like that. You don't have to disconnect any wires. Just let her ride. Now these bolts right here that's holding the flex plate here, or this cover plate, to the transmission, it can be a bit deceptive. To the novice who's never taken one of these apart, it would look like, hey, I can just leave those bolts in there and pull it all back. No, you can't. Oftentimes what this what this is, this plate is in between the flywheel and the engine block. And then all your your flywheel and your clutch assembly is encased up inside this area. So you gotta make sure you take those out, 18 millimeter. Once you get that 10 millimeter bolt out, pull the sensor that way and just give a slight little wiggle as you're pulling it, pops right out of there. Check out all the fuzzies on the end of that sensor. Yeah, there's some metal up inside that thing. The reason we're pulling the transmission to begin with is the uh, throw out bearing grenaded. He stuck a magnet down inside the bell house and pulled out little uh, ball bearings everywhere with the uh, where it turned, where it kind of fell apart. So, put a new throw out bearing in it while we're in there replacing the clutch and pressure plate and stuff. So, fuzzy. Time for the bell housing bolts. 16 millimeter here and on the cover plate. Those are 13 millimeter. Then you got the ones way up top. Have fun with those. So 16 millimeter, you're gonna need a wrench up top. Now you got two bolts right down behind the valve cover. Yeah, exactly. I know what you're thinking, and I'm thinking the same thing. No fun. So unplug all your wiring harness here. You take that little orange clip, you push it from the bottom side here, squeeze the tab here and separate them. Off this right here, you'll use your grip little slot right here and it just slides right off this right here so both these harnesses again push a little red tab up or orange tab squeeze right there and give it a good pull both of them right here and it looks like probably down here the other way looks to be about 13 millimeters so we got to take that off which should allow this plastic piece to come up I'm hoping I don't have to disconnect too much and it looks like also the fuel rail the wiring harness there's some clips on the other side. See, right there, you're going to separate all that to allow the harness to come up out of here. And you probably have to unplug at least two of your rear injectors. So, thanks, Chrysler. Made it easy. Not. <coughs> okay, change of plans. Notice, I pulled the transmission jack back out. We were looking at that those top bolts way up there and dad says, hey, wait a minute, let's try something. So pull the transmission jack out, put that jack in to support it right here to control how much drop we get out of the transmission transfer case. <laughs> because the transfer case is back here, you got a lot of weight for leverage, which is pulling that down. Now it's torquing the motor mass a little bit, but we still got this supporting that to keep from torquing the mounts too hard. So what did we gain? Look. I put this bolt back in right here to keep the bell housing tight to the block. But way up there, look at yonder. Those bolts are wide open view up there. So instead of fussing and cussing and inventing new cuss words, trying to come in from behind that head to get those bolts up there, drop the transmission back, see how far it's tilted? Dropping it down like that gave clearance to the top of the bell housing. So that's going to be easy to get up there with the socket and my phone's going off telling me it's time to go to work. So it's easy to get up there with a socket to take those bolts out. That, he had a genius idea. That's where I get my smarts from, huh? But, caveat, put bottom bolts back in because right the way it's tilted right now, if you take those two top bolts out and you got the rest of these out, guess what happens? That transmission is going to separate from the bell housing and you may end up with a transmission laying on the ground. Not cool. Or broke. Yeah, exactly. So put your bottom bolts back in here. One here, one on the other side. Then on the bottom, they're going to be easy to get. So once we get all the top crap out of the way, transmission jack goes back under the transmission, pick it back up and level it, take out the two bottom bolts, the whole transmission goes you know, that way. See? That. I was actually draining that harness up there, I really was. But yeah, I see one of the bolts right there. And on the other side, it's just gonna be, I think that's, 
Nope, not quite see it, but I know where it's at because right there at the end of my fingers where the wiring harness splits, the bolt is right below that. So either side with an extension and a good torquey ratchet, you're good. Sweet. So here's the scenario. We have got two bolts in the in the bell house. You got one up here. That's taking that one over there. That's what's holding the transmission in place at the moment. Transmission jack back in place, strapped around it on the adapter plate. Wayne's gonna pull it back that way. Keep a jack under your oil pan. Yeah, that's what that thing's called. <laughs> to support the engine, because once you pull all that loose, the engine's gonna want to drop back. So keep all that supported. We're gonna take these two bolts out, pull the transmission back. Ladies and gentlemen, here's the reason we are pulling it. There's the throw out bearing. What you think? Think we can salvage it? Me either. A little grease. Charlie. Put a little grease in it. Too darn old to be dumping the clutches. No, I don't do that. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah. Dad was out and this ain't the clutch went out in, so we had to bring it home using can't disengage the clutch so you gotta have skills you really gotta know how to drive a stick to bring one home not using the clutch at all but this rig has what 324,000 on it Something like it yeah yeah this thing has 324,000 yeah, do dollars miles on it so I think it's kind of do all right so we got it back far enough that we can get to the clutch system change all that out look right here this right here is your ring that runs on the flywheel for your uh, crankshaft position sensor. Crankshaft position sensor senses these little teeth coming around through here. And every time it hits that little gap area right there, it says, hey, there's a gap. It's time to shoot a signal. So every time you miss that signal right there on the sensor, that's what tells the ECM, says, hey, I got to shoot firing. So just a quick little tip there for you. So we got to go around this clutch plate, take the bolts out, and... Yep, get that rascal out and see what kind of shape the flywheel's in. So, I'll be back in a bit. So, what we got going on here, he breaks them loose with the ratchet there. I'm holding here, and Wayne's up front holding the cranks to keep the engine from turning. And I got one right here. Yeah. I got it. I thought it was loose enough. Huh? So I thought it was loose enough to turn by hand. Well, you also got the, the clutch plates coming out on it too, the pressure. Uh, spring pressure for the pressure on it, so it'll tighten those bolts up as they come out. Could get to a certain point. It's finger tight now if you want to get it where you got it too, so. Here we go. It's out. Rotate. Hang on, I can, I can rotate it. Let me rotate. All right. A little more. Okay. And I can hear the comments now, or see the comments. Yes, people, I know there's a tool that holds these things in place, but we're not using it, so there. Old school. Yep, old school. Sometimes you can take you know, certain places in the separated plate, you can hang a screwdriver in them or hang a screwdriver in the clutch plate. There's all kinds of tricks to do it. But yeah, there is a tool that kind of looks like a big old leverage bar that takes what's called a paw. It hooks right here and there and holds the teeth as you try to prevent it from turning. So for the people who don't know what the tool is, I'll pop it up on the screen when I find one. Fancy tools, we don't need no fancy tools. <laughs> yeah, that's right. We've been doing this stuff for a long time. In your video, you need to tell them people when you take that out, it will fall and it will bust your head. You sure enough will. So we got this pressure plate out right now, as Dad just mentioned, whenever you're taking, you saw, seen that last shot, that we're loosening the bolts and stuff. You need, if you're working by yourself, you need to try to set up to where you can have one of your bolts either as low as possible because then if it's sitting low the clutch or pressure plate will want to set back on you they'll give you a chance to hold on to it 
Now, if you got your bolt to the side and you're working by yourself, what's going to happen is it's going to want to roll on you. Roll, pivot on that bolt. It'll smack you right square in the head. And they hurt. If they hurt bad, <laughs> they'll lay that noggin wide open. Look right here where that throw-up bearing was eating on the fingers. Chewing it up. Clutch plate. <laughs> <laughs> Dad talked about the front drive shaft, smacked him in the noggin. Clutch is good. We're not reusing it, obviously. And the surface, we got a little bit of heat marks. Got a little groovage right there. Let's see what the flywheel looks like. I'm not sure how well the camera's going to pick it up at this angle and what little light I got. But overall, the flywheel looks really exceptionally good. I see a couple of heat spots here and there. Like right in that area there, I got a little bit of heat spot going on. But there is no heat fractures. I mean, it's actually smooth. And I have no issues running it just like it is. I don't need to surface it or nothing. But one thing you got to watch about resurfacing these flywheels out of these Jeeps. As I pointed out earlier, so can my flashlight stand up, these fingers right here, if you resurface the flywheel, they take uh, what's called Blanchard. And what it does, with well, turning the uh, rotors, they cut them in a rotary fashion. It's like, it's spinning and the cutter comes across like this. On a Blanchard, it's a, it's a big flying disc that the blades are coming around like this right here. So it cuts a circular pattern across the surface of the flywheel. The problem of it is you got your reluctor ring here that your uh, crankshaft position sensor runs off of. You're also going to shave that. So more times than often, that if you're going to have to resurface one of these flywheels, you better off just buying one. And I haven't checked on pricing on one in a long time, but they're not as expensive as you might think they would be. And just for kicks and giggles, I'll drop a link if you guys need to buy one. I'll drop a link to one of these. This is a 2006 model TJ. 4.0 liter sport. So I'm gonna get me some cleaner and we'll wipe that flywheel down and say, oh, it's pretty. And stick the clutch in and put her back together. And just for your educational reference, this is how it's supposed to look. Not like that. Now you've learned something today. Now in all seriousness, really. Let's see what brand is this one? The clutch kit, which is a very popular kit that they use in the Jeeps, is a Luke or Luck or whatever, L-U-K. Very popular kit that many of the Jeeping community uses. But here's the way the throw out bearing is supposed to look. What happens is on the uh, pressure plate, when you press in the clutch, this surface right here pushes on the diaphragm fingers of the clutch, disengaging it. And another thing you want to check too is on the wear point here. Like I said, this rig right here has got 324,000 miles on it, but it's been very well maintained since Dad got it anyway. Not the person before him, <laughs> not so much. So, no issues inside there. My wear points are good on my fork. All good there. I have seen holes in those. Uh, yes. But look at the difference between them. Look at your pad surface here. So we want to get on the flywheel, we'll take a razor blade, clean up the flywheel just to accommodate this extra surface area here. Because it's pretty narrow. Actually got a lot more clutch with this right here. And this is again it's a L-U-K, Luke, Luck, whatever you want to call that kit. Very good setup. That's gonna hold a lot more friction and give you better performance. It's a dad speed shift again. He didn't hear me say that. Eh, I wasted that joke. So as I was saying with a throwout bearing, here is your clutch fingers for the diaphragm. It rides right on top of it like they were there. So when you push your clutch in, it pushes in that diaphragm. When it pushes in that diaphragm this way, what happens, it pivots inside here in the middle. When it pivots, it pulls this backwards away from your clutch grip, therefore disengaging your clutch. So whenever you let go of the clutch, throwout bearing pull, retracts back. The fingers go back this way, allowing this to pivot back forward, engaging your clutch. Let's see what I'll do. I'm going to keep that clutch right there. I've got a hydraulic press, and I'll demonstrate on how the clutch system works. Sound good? Sweet. Be sure to subscribe for that video. Okay, you see right there is your pile shaft bearing upside here. And we were just checking it out because 
you know, are we going to change it? Are we not? Whatever. And also, it feels good. And the camera, at least according to my viewfinder, ain't picking it up very well. It looks exceptionally well. And so we're just going to breeze that bearing let it ride. I know I'm going to catch some crap for that in the comments, but hey, have fun. So just to satisfy my own curiosity, since I have so much more pad here, I wanted to put that up there. We got the uh, pilot shaft bearings located in place and looking at where it is. I mean, the overall diameter is good, riding good, because you want to make sure it's not a bigger diameter, which you can do that with your old one to compare it. But it's going pretty deep inside there. Dad and I both have to have a razor blade to it. We're not scraping anything off of it. That flywheel is absolutely in excellent, excellent shape. So at this point, we're going to slap a little grease in that pilot bearing, and we're going to put this baby back together. All right, people. Y'all want to answer a question for me? Why do they have this other thing right here and here? Because it snaps in the back of this. Then they got this. But I ain't putting it on that finger. I mean, you make a pretty little ring out of it. Oh, as Wayne said, you can see a green ladder, and we got black ladder. And there we go. Yeah, that's it. That's what it's for. We can role play. Yeah. Oftentimes for the factory, these uh, flywheels and clutch blades and any type of the metal surfaces will come with a protective film on them. Get you some brake cleaner, spray it down real well in a rag and clean it off. Because he, weirdly enough, actually we were discussing this a minute ago because Wayne's TJ has got a little grab in the rear uh, brakes. And we were discussing this a minute ago that it's weird how water will make your brakes slide or even on a clutch will make it slide, but you put oil, oil slick. Oil is a lubricant. But yeah, if you get oil on your brake pads or your brake or your brake drums or even on a clutch, it'll grab. It's just totally weird. But a little brake cleaner, wipe all your surfaces off good, put her together. You need some brake cleaner. So what you guys didn't see is when we was pulling the, the uh, throwout bearing off this uh, sleeve right here, that it was coming off like not so easily. So we got a bunch of slime and junk, and plus where that bearing come apart, it's just metal dust on it, honestly. So taking brake cleaner, rags, and a scotch brake pad, clean this right here up real good. And out here with the pot bearing, I'll clean up all that stuff is up good. They put you a light film of grease on it to make sure your, your pilot bearing, I keep saying pilot bearing, push, throw it bearing, there we go. Make sure you throw it bearing slides like it should. So get all that junk off, make sure it's good and clean so you got proper clutch engagement. Look at that, ain't that so much more pretty? Got all that junk off of it. Basically, all I ended up doing first, old rag right here, spray brake cleaner, wiped all the junk off first to get all the major grime off. Scotch brake pad, soaked it down with brake cleaner, scrubbed it real well, made sure you had no anything stuck to it, even out here on the pilot bearing shaft. Now, uh, Dad and Wayne was after discussing the, you know, the roles of the pilot bearing, it's, and they made a very good point, it's something I want to explain. Back inside here, you've got the bearing that's back inside the case here. Shaft comes out, then your pilot bearing rides right here. The pilot bearing technically really has no pressure on it whatsoever, especially when you're going down the road because your clutch disc is holding this in place, keeping this all in alignment. When you disengage the clutch, of course, then the clutch is uh, free floating on the shaft here while your pressure plate is spread, allowed it to free float. Basically, the only role of that uh, pilot bearing is that it keeps this right here shaft centered amongst the bearing inside here. Now, if your bearing is worn, shows any kind of grit or something like that, you definitely want to change it out because it's got to allow this end plate right here to shift, shift you back and forth, which will in turn start eating the bearing inside here. So, I know I'm going to catch it the comments about us not changing out the uh, pilot bearing, but I promise you it's really super smooth up inside there. So, they're kind of a bear to get out. I've got the special tool it takes to pull, but we don't have a whole lot of room. Uh, we could drop the transmission, take it on out, but like I said, the bearing's in good shape. We've greased it back up, and we're good to go. So at this point, Dad's got the clutch and pressure plate sitting over here waiting on me, and I'm going to close my mouth and put this thing together. Yeah. So we had our hands full. Couldn't exactly hold the camera, but basically what happens is you take one of your bolts here, go as high as you possibly can. If you get to the top bolt, put the bolt alignment in it. Don't worry about the clutch plate yet. Get one bolt in and that'll support the weight of your pressure plate. Then you take your pressure plate, move it outward like this, and put your clutch disc in. And with the uh, spring bulging outward into the pressure plate, I'll show you that on the old one. And uh, then take your alignment tool, which you see right here, right there. There's your alignment tool. It slides it to the splines. You move your clutch 
backwards and forth, up and down, because you got one bolt in place that you can pivot your disc back, your uh, pressure plate back and forth. That allows you to have a center line to where you just rotate it back and forth and keep pushing on your alignment tool, and all of a sudden your fill goes doop, it'll pop right inside that pilot bearing. Then put your rest of your bolts in by finger, then go around it. Don't tighten one and just crank it down. Go around it, around, around and around until you get the clutch plate pressure plate pushing in evenly if you torque one side down it makes the whole uh, disc system in a torque twist it does not do well so go around it gently tighten them all down then the torque down to what was it 38 pounds yeah all right so your clutch plate 38 pounds now as we put the clutch in look right there see how the springs step outward and this side's flat this it's going to go inside your pressure plate like that. This side right here goes to your flywheel. So again, come back to reiterate something. Whenever you tighten these down, if best you can, I know someone's way up here in the middle of nowhere, crisscross them out to make your clutch plate, your pressure plate come in evenly. But what's going to happen, you got to think, oh, it's no, what is it? this one's tied. These come over here, it's like, why is this one right here sticking out this far? That's because as you come around your crisscross pattern, you're pushing the clutch pressure plate in toward your flywheel and it's going to create those gaps so you just got to keep crisscrossing around until you get them all in evenly and then you start them, bleh, torquing them down to 38 to 40 foot pounds or pound feet yeah which yeah, is this is about the third round of the yeah it's about the third round and see that right there's not touching but he's going to come in okay now it's touching the plate and now it's on the flywheel so bring them in slowly because then you got even pressure am amongst your clutch plate and you're not torquing or twisting your pressure plate. I mean your, yeah, pressure plate. I'll get it right in there. Can y'all tell I don't script this stuff? All right, go ahead. You can do it. All right, after you get everything torqued down to 38 to 40 foot pounds, or I'm not going to tell you what happened on my torque wrench. It was kind of, I wish I had the camera going. You guys just missed a funny moment. But anyway, after you get everything torqued down, take that alignment tool slide her on out now at this point what we're going to do is have a lot of fun getting the jack aligned and the transmission aligned to get that spline to go inside the clutch plate once you get everything tightened down the clutch plate's not going to move anymore so at this point we're going to have fun putting all this in now before we do we're going to get a little bit of grease for the, for the pilot bearing uh the push golly throw out bearing where it all bit rides like i mentioned a moment ago get all that grease that cleaned up we gotta put our fork in and yep we gotta do that so go find me some grease get your throw out bearing snapped onto your fork put cleaned it real well put you some little grease in the pivots right here and we're gonna slide her in that thing right there was fun we should have the camera on there so you saw how we did it but basically that hook here hooks into that slot there and then we took the pliers, grabbed hold of the spring, and just kind of collapsed, bent the spring downward to force it to hook under as we push the throw out bearing that way. I hope you got enough out of that. So, Slide, see, after cleaning it, so grease it, see how easy that thing slides. It does a wonderful job. So, we got a pivot over here. So, now what we got to do is that snap ring here has got to snap over top of that pivot ball there. And over here on this side, you can see that's where your slave cylinder comes through and pushes right there which pushes your throw up bearing this way, which pushes against the fingers of your clutch, disengaging your clutch. See, that's not so difficult. So, I'm gonna get that snap ring on there, then we're gonna start moving the transmission forward and see how much fun we have lining those splines up. I hate the job missed all the action, but hey, she's home now. Put the transmission in especially hanging with a transfer case on it and i know there's going to be comments it's easier with the transfer case off. most cases it is because you're adding a lot of telling weight but lining up the splines with the clutch plate you really it's a case of lining up the splines to hit that perfect perfect angle you'll fight it you'll cuss it you'll think about it you'll scratch your head and next thing you know it'll go thump, it'll fall right in so uh actually been a good time to set up a bunch of gopros and just let y'all watch but oops it consisted of proper angle, weighing or dad up front, turning the uh, crank. To turn, when you turn the crank, you're turning the clutch plate. When you turn the clutch plate, you're, you're lining up the splines of your shaft or your transmission. 
So it's a combination of several things that help get that thing in there. So at this point, we're really on a home run, running into home plate, and we've got the bolts tightened up to the bell housing too of them anyway. And so at this point, it's all reassembly. So at this point, reassembly is, the same, is just reverse of disassembly. We've got most everything going back together right now. I just want to give you guys a little pointer about the shifter. <coughs> Whenever you put it back in, because of the way those slide plates inside there that lines up the, the shifting plates, sit on there and just hold it. If it doesn't sit down, just hold the base, pull back on the shifter, and it'll drop right in place. Now, as you put your bolts in, do not, do not, do not tighten them up. Get all four of them started at least halfway before you even think about snugging them up. Why? Simply because as this thing positions, if you get one of them too tight, you're not gonna you have a hard time getting your other ones in. So turn them in three or four turns, go into the next one, turn it in three or four times, and so on until you get them all started, three or four turns, then go in and snug them up. Don't crank them tight, so that's all I need to tell you. And next time I run across another pointer as we're putting this thing together, I'll hit you up again. But Right now, like I said, assembly is reverse of disassembly, so put her together. Okay, another reassembly tip. We're putting the exhaust bracket on now. Save yourself some headache. Take you a little bit of grease, put it inside here to help this slide inside that. Where it hangs off your exhaust right here, put your little grease on that. That's going to help everything slide in place for you because where stuff gets dry and old and hard and brittle, it doesn't flex like it does whenever you put new stuff in. So put you some grease in there, that'll help everything slide back in place. Save yourself some frustration. Show you how you work, we, <clears throat> show you how we're working this right now. We've got my little small jack out here. The big jack actually takes up so much room underneath here, well, I don't use it, but the small jack ain't got enough lift to do what we need to do. So we stack a couple two by's onto it. All we're doing is supporting the weight of the engine as we, just enough we can either lift or lower the, engine and transmission combination to put it where we want it because I would dad just jacked it up just enough now that I can get the <coughs> bracket in for your transmission mount I've got it hanging on the exhaust it comes over screws into here and right now just don't lower the jack until we get the skid plate on but we don't want to put the skid plate on it yet you want to know why because we got to put the front drive shaft in put the front drive shaft in it comes over here it bolts on there of course goes to your front pumpkin there it is a lot, tons, 1,000% easier to put your front drive shaft in with the skid plate off than it is with the skid plate on. Because you, yeah, it's just no fun. It's really no fun. So before you put your skid plate on, save yourself a headache. Put that front drive shaft in, and it goes right. I can't see it right there. And slave cylinder. We got a new one. We'll be putting it in here just a little bit. Well, they will be. I got to go to work here in a minute. So, anyway, I'm going to get that mount tied up. So, everyone, if you enjoyed that video, hit me with a thumbs up, subscribe if you haven't. Let's go comments down below. Peace out. Later, y'all. It's junk. Peace.